Alrighty, so I figured I'd do a quick update on the Denali plow. I have had some corks with it since I've owned it here for, I've only used it, you know, a couple of times. We had half, a little over half an inch this morning. And uh, other than that, you know, like the last time it was three quarters of an inch. It wasn't all that much, but it was just enough. You know, I figured before it got all packed down, I'd try and move it. But uh, my biggest problem has been since I started using it, as you're driving down the driveway, the whole blade is chopping, going up and down the driveway. I mean, I have to do like two, three miles an hour in order to get it to just kind of scrape the ground without it rattling itself to death. I mean, it was just relentlessly stupid how bad it was. And uh, and then the second complaint I had was when you lifted it up, I mean, the thing was just rocking and, and swinging back and forth. Like, it, it, it just about artic it didn't articulate like this, but it did like that and like this. It was, it, you know, the push tubes were doing this, and the plow was doing this on the push tube. Oh, I was like, what the hell's going on? This thing is just as loose as a goose. It's really annoying. And I figured, well, that's got to be contributing to the chopping because it was just blah, 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 going down the driveway. It's just horrible. And so I remembered as I was putting it together underneath this plate that is bolted down, there's a metal ring and then there's a plastic ring that act as spacers between the swivel and the push tube. And I was thinking well there were two discs in there two plates so I'll try taking one out and see what happens so I took the plastic one out left the steel one and now I because what was also happening and I and this is probably still happening it's just a lot tighter that gap has been taken up with that plastic spacer out and it's pretty tight to move back and forth but it uh, does not hardly have any movement side to, you know, tilting or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't rattle around on the push tube anymore. So with that done, let's see. I lubed absolutely everything up. So all metal to metal has been, as you can see, just greased all the hell. So we should be okay there for a while. Uh, I gotta loosen this up. It's pretty damn tight. Can't even hardly break that loose. And then, of course, you know, within the first 150 feet, I had these things bust off. I had them sitting up here in the garage. Yeah, it just, and I'm sure all the chopping and whatnot did not help. That probably contributed to it, which I was really disappointed. So I don't know what the difference is that. These are different a little bit. They got the reflector up top, which is kind of cool, I guess. But, uh, yeah, they just snapped right off within the first 150 feet. That was, you know, just, just that was the pretty much the first thing I, second, first thing I noticed? I don't know, between the chopping. But these things were just rattling around. And I tightened this. I just tightened this earlier today, and it's already, the bolts are coming loose again. So that... It's just great. Uh, so both sides, yep, both sides are loose again. So that's cool. So I gotta freaking tighten them again with something. I don't know because they're the nylock nuts, but for some reason they're coming loose. So I gotta figure out something else with that. But then, like I said, the push tube was swinging back and forth. And well, of course, that comes back here. And I had a you know one of these d-ring pin kits that different sizes and whatnot so i took one pin out and it had a lot of slop in the hole so i took the biggest one i had in the kit and put it in there it's it's just a hair on the sloppy side but it's infinitely better than what came with the plow so it took up a lot a lot of the slop I guess I'll lift her up and see. So 
I'd grab the edge of the plow and the only thing moving now is the push tube which is hard for you to see but the push tube is doing that a little bit but uh, it's almost it is a two-handed job to break this loose and then be able to spin the thing and it's probably a little too tight but I'm telling you it's a hell of a lot tighter than it was than with the uh, with that other spacer in there and if they had a smaller a very thin thin spacer almost non-existent it'd probably be perfect but for the moment this will work a lot but then I go to push it side to side you can hear it clicking but there's very little movement compared to what there was because I'm I'm not even joking there was almost inch and a half back and forth and it was just disgusting you know between the thing plow doing this the push tubes doing that cow it was like it was ready to fall right off the four wheeler so I am um, just a quick update on what I had to do to get this solid it does not chop near as bad as it did so that's good and then they because I had cosmetic damage on this where this plate is bent downward and then uh like the bottom lip down there has some pretty big dents in it uh, as you can see in my unboxing video of this thing they reimbursed me some for the cosmetic damage so they sent me two sets of plow um, antennas and then gave me some money back because I saw on Facebook that they offered from time to time damaged or cosmetic blemished plows for a, a pretty good discount so I was like well this fits into that category with dings dents bended thing bent things and uh, you know insufficient hardware for you know the size holes in both the push tube and the bracket that it created so much movement because of the loose pins small too small a pin and um but like I said, I was very happy to see that in the accessory kit, I was able to get, I got that pulley, and then I got, you know, the strap. They gave me the bolt-on type of pulley, so I thought that was separate. And when you go to purchase a plow, that kit for just the pulleys and the strap and stuff is, is separate all its own, apart from the plow antennas and the, the rubber flap, so... It was a little confusing. I was just that's why I thought I got a screaming deal when I, you know, first opened the box for the accessory kit, saw the antennas. Cool, it's expecting that. The rubber flap, yep. And then the plot the pulleys in the strap in there. I was like, wait a minute. Well, I'm glad I didn't pay extra for the pulley kit because that would have been pointless. But uh, and then I, of course, I ordered the right adapter for this four wheeler. So. So, I hope that helps you make a bit more of an informed decision and what you might have to look for when you order a plow and get it put together. And if it's not to your standard, like it wasn't mine, it uh, was a little disappointing. And the longest part was putting on the doggone blade. Dad said when he ordered his, they gave him two blades for his plow, but I only got one. So, I don't know if things cheaped out or what, but... To see as many as they have uh, available from time to time. I don't know if there's any available now or any or when I looked, but um, or there wasn't when I looked. But for blemished or damaged plows, you know the number that they had last year throughout the year that they offered. I was like, well, this is kind of a common occurrence then, and it's a little disappointing because dads didn't have any problems at all. But then, I mean, I had to shave down one of my wrenches in order to even get it to fit in those tight places for the nuts to put the blade or the, the scraper blade on i don't look forward to taking that off or putting that back on ever that is such a chore that's going to take at least an hour to do those eight freaking bolts no thanks but uh otherwise I'm, I'm happy with it otherwise it was a pretty good deal i mean considering you can buy thousand dollar plows you can buy a, a is it weston that makes the plow for this thing that's all power it's got the v that you know it's all hydraulic electric whatever 
and it's like a five thousand dollar plow for your four-wheeler now how stupid is that i mean yeah you got the money to burn but holy shit <laughs> five thousand dollars to buy you a plow for your truck and you get a hell of a lot more for your money for that but so you know for what i spent and then got reimbursed and but i did have to kind of haggle with them i had to you know they only offered me a certain amount which was to me was like whoa well that's, that's like a drop in a bucket that's nothing you know it's chump change and I'm not rich or nothing, so chump change is chump change. And uh, my goodness, that was... So I was like, um, I'm more in this kind of ballpark. And she, you know, I, I shot a little bit above, knowing that she'd probably come back and say, I'll come back a little bit lower. And she did, so I'm glad. And that was kind of right where I had, my mind was right at, so I'm glad she worked with me. I mean, they didn't... They weren't rude, and they weren't <clears throat> unavailable, so to speak. Uh, when I had first emailed them and said hey i'm having an issue damage whatever uh you know she she sent me out to plow and tennis without question she sent me two of them just bing bomb right in the mail next day so that was awesome uh but then when i said the damage i sent her pictures i sent her the unboxing video she had forwarded them to her tech guy i'm like okay oh you'll hear back from him either today or tomorrow okay well, the day and the day after, I didn't hear anything. So I emailed her. I said, have you heard anything from your tech guy? Oh, he's out of the office right now. He'll, you'll hear from him tomorrow or this afternoon. I'm like, okay. Well, another day, day and a half goes by, nothing. I'm like, okay. Well, I got a little busy and sidetracked. So then I waited another couple days, the weekend and whatever. Obviously, they're not open on the weekend, but. I went in there on Thursday, because they're only open to 11.30 on Friday, but I went, out, went in there on a Thursday, and I'm like, okay, I've emailed you with you guys, I'm not getting any response from this guy, will you email him directly? <sighs> What's his, you know, she gave me his email, I emailed him right in the parking lot, I heard from him that night after hours, and I was like, okay. He's like, I'll, I'll, thanks for sending this over. Um, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Well, great. Friday, 11.30. Or, yeah, 11.30. They close. Well, I think he sent me a message at 3.30 on Friday. Because she said he was working from home. Uh, once I went there in person, of course. And so I got a message from him. And it was, so it looks like it's just purely cosmetic. Nothing structural. Uh, we can offer you a partial refund, uh, but I'll have to transfer you over to my office, my customer service manager, and then she'll discuss what that looks like with you. And I'm like, oh, great. Well, then the lady I'd been talking to emailed me and said, I can offer you this much. And I'm like, and that's just where we went into the hole. It, that, that's that's nothing. I mean, that's where I said, I said on, I see on Facebook, you guys offer up to two three hundred dollars off for plows now i didn't offer ask for that much but um you know i said you know what you're offering is, is hardly any i appreciate the offer in there and you guys working with me but this is nothing this is just chump change and my gosh so so then i said i'm more in this ballpark so but we got it all settled and i've i guess improved it since obviously it's better i'm a lot happier so i'm just hoping we get some good amounts of snow here while we're coming up to the end of the season it's 40 degrees today which is really nice but uh you know i was just disappointed the amount of money almost you know a couple hundred shy of a thousand dollars for a plow setup and you know, having dinky fart around issues and, and uh, shouldn't have to modify anything. But I understand this thing probably comes from China and uh, it seems to be of good quality. Dad's, for the most part, Dad's uh, plow hasn't had an issue. He's been, we've been using his, used his here, you know, three, four times and up at his house, no problem. He's used it at his job site, hasn't had an issue. And hasn't had many complaints at all so it's just for some reason i get 
sometimes get the bottom of the barrel items that have been beaten around, thrown around, and whatever. I know I'm not the only guy, but, you know, it's just kind of one of them things. It's like, why? Why do I got to get that crap? <laughs> why do I always got to have... It makes content on YouTube. Not that I make all that great content, but something else to bitch about. It's all about it is, so... Hope this helps for whoever's interested in a Denali plow. What to look for, I guess. Um, but they were quick to work with me. I just had to stick on the ball and uh, keep it rolling. Otherwise, it seemed like it was going to stall out. But who knows? Maybe it was just a fluke, you know. But uh, hope that helps. It plows great. Freaking 850 pushes snow like it's nobody's business, which is great. I'd expect it to. And I'm telling you, you know, in previous videos of this four wheeler, I compared these tires to what dad has on his uh, 570. And I tell you, I'll take these tires all day, every day over his. So his was skating around the, on the ice on the driveway, and these ones bite in a whole lot better. I mean, almost twice as much. And of course, it's ice, you're going to slide, but. I mean, his was just a skating rink. It was just ridiculous. Uh, I, I couldn't turn the, the handlebars to steer at all. It would just go straight. I'm like, come on. <laughs> you know, but this thing bites in and grabs and goes. So definitely like these tires that it came with. So seemed to do pretty good. A set of studded tires would be pretty good, cool for the wintertime, though. But, you know, that's I'm sure that's upwards of a thousand dollars if you had a spare set of rims and tires sitting around for this thing just for the season. <laughs> I'm not that much into it, so hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. God bless.